Okay, so we've just finished up the laterals. By design, we have left a little bit of asymmetry from right to left. And we have also, by design, tried to leave the two centrals notably longer to give a more youthful appearance. Okay, so we've got our centrals and laterals done. We're going to move on to the cuspids. One of the first things I attempt to do as we're building these T forms is I look at the silhouette. I try to establish the silhouette of the tooth first. Then I move into the facial anatomy and contours. It's very important with cuspids that we don't make these, and particularly in young, young ladies and women, that we don't make these too bulky and thick. They're flatter on the facial surface than I see many times um, being created by ceramists. Uh, in other words, I see a, a more flatness in nature predominantly than we see in our fabrication and duplication of these teeth in, in ceramics. So it tends to give a real bold look that's not very soft and dainty for ladies in my opinion. So we, tr we try hard not to put too much composite there and, and give ourselves a flat profile while at the same time creating the labial form and morphology that is, that is very characteristic of cuspids. I think I'll stop there for the moment and we'll work on the other side. Notice how her natural cuspid sort of dives to the lingual a good bit and doesn't real, uh, have a real pronounced corner of her arch. So we're taking advantage of that fact with this augmentation and trying to angle these more facially, more labially, and create a little stronger corner, if you will, in her smile, while at the same time not making it bulky in the gingival one-third so that we create this real strong look that might be more characteristic of male. Okay, I'm going to get over and look directly at this. Okay. Before I move back to the bicuspids, I see just a tiny little void on the lingual that I managed to leave, so I'm going to close that up real quick. Between seven and eight. In our earlier days, we would go in after we had cured these and separate them with either a Sarasaw or some sort of separator of that sort. But we have now, in recent years, adapted the philosophy of leaving these together just for better retention. Uh, we, that does put the burden on the patient to f use the floss threader, keep them clean, but uh, we feel like that's a good trade-off for um, having them unexpectedly come off and put stress on everybody. Okay, let's cure that. So our last two teeth here. Many people design teeth and smiles by doing the subtractive technique. In other words, they build up a big, large blob of material, and then they use hand pieces or carvers or whatever instrument to try to reduce back in, into a tooth form. Certainly nothing wrong with that, but my personal belief is that we get a little closer to nature shapes by doing it additive and the simple reason for that is that there's not very many straight lines found in natural teeth. There's there soft gentle curves 
So if we can train ourselves to, if we're using wax or composite, whatever medium, porcelain, uh, if we can train ourselves to do it additive only, in my opinion that, or, or rather more additive than subtractive, we will be doing some degree of touch up here with the hand pieces and shaping and so there's certainly a need to do a bit but um, one of my uh, ceramists once told me if it goes in the oven looking like a tooth it comes out looking like a tooth so basically the idea being that they want to shape this in its raw form as we try to do with the composite here before we cure it or fire it. Okay let's cure these last two teeth all right, so ladies and gentlemen, here we have it uh, without doing any subtractive at all. This is just our additive buildups, and we're getting ready now to refine these with our handpiece and polish them up and send our patient out to test drive these. Even though I spoke very favorably about these softer retractors, believe me, after an hour, hour and 10 or 15 minutes, they begin to get very tiring. So we're going to go and take those out. Our patient has been super, super tolerant here and super good. I'm going to go ahead and rinse her out well. Sometimes before I pick up the handpiece, I just let their lips lay there a bit and look for uh, the proper reveal so that, uh, open just a little bit there, so that we see pretty much the same amount of tooth on each side. We're looking also to see if we've got that real strong presence of the two front teeth. We may want to emphasize that perhaps just a tad bit more. But the wonderful thing here is this is just kind of our jumping off point. We can change anything we need to or want to, and particularly after they've had time to test drive this a little bit. So now we're going to get our, our uh, 12 fluted carbide burrs and work on a little bit of smoothing. We're going to start with the inside on the lingual and just smooth up those areas so that it feels good to our tongue. Okay, dear, over priming. Okay, let's have our articulating paper and we'll go ahead and check our clearances here. Bite together here and open. Bite together, Christine, and open. Chris, to verify that you can close in a normal way there without, does it feel like anything's bumping up here in the front? No. Well, that feels okay to you. Good. Good. We're going to take a flame shape 7901 carbide and go in around the marginal areas. Open up these braziers just a bit. Again, we take our mouth mirror and we check that embrasure area and confirm that we've got the depth we're looking for there and the separation. The 7901 burr is a workhorse for me. It's such a great shape, in my opinion, for finishing around the tissue line, for opening up the embrasures and contact zone around the teeth margins. Okay, we're going to go ahead and rinse that off. And we'll verify that we've got pretty smooth margins that are not very detectable with our Explorer. Obviously, this doesn't have to be perfection, but we want it to be nice enough that we're not going to see the patient come back with inflamed tissue. Okay, now we're going to take a large tapered 12 fluted burr, finishing burr, and we're going to fine tune our facial surfaces just a little bit more. Here's where we're trying to honor our lobes and global development in our reflective and deflective zones.
There are some wonderful composite artisans in our industry. Uh, Newton Fall, Buddy Mopper, many others that come to mind. Um, Corky Wilhide is another one that just popped in my head. But keep in mind that we're not attempting here in this process to create the same sort of finished product that they would create with their permanent composite restoration. We're simply trying to create a blueprint. So secondary tertiary anatomy and some of the polish and finish is just not that critical to us here. And we simply aren't going to spend the time to do that. I do encourage you to take those courses and develop those skill sets because they will help you immensely as you treat your patient population aesthetically.